if there's something that I know that we all want is freedom, freedom of time, freedom of headspace, freedom to be ourselves, freedoms to freedom to do things our way. This week's guest has lived 72 lives in one and is on a mission to help people live a free and an iconic life. Judy V guides entrepreneurs, visionaries, and leaders to live an iconic life. She does, this, she does this through her body of work, the Trilogy of Transformation, the most powerful transformational process in the world. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation today. I'm so excited for this, Sarah. Thank you so much. So much. Um, Judy, you lived 72 lives in one. You live from people would have never lived out as a life to be able to now live a, live a life that nobody is, not many people get to live in their life. Those two extremes. So to give mm -hmm. us a little bit of context for our subject today, could you share with us a part of your life journey that is so fascinating? My whole thing in life, my, my, um, my motto and one of my mottos, my leading motto in life is about living an iconic life and everything that that encompasses. So every single day, my life is guided by what is iconic for me. Mm. And that allows me to, to create the life that I truly love and do every day what it is I love. And it is not what most people think when they look at the amount of success that I've managed to achieve in my life, given the origins of where I started. Because where I am at is not predictable, was not predictable. Would, would anyone who'd have seen me in those years would have predicted a completely different life to the one that I live. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, I, and I put it down to something that was truly extraordinary that happened for me during those years. Mm -hmm. So just to put it into context, and I'm going to, for the sake of... Um, I, I don't want to activate people's nervous systems. So I'm going to leave a lot of the, the real details out so um, because it can be quite triggering. So I'm going to sort of brush over it, but make no mistake. Um, it was very deep and very profound, and I felt it very deeply. So I may, it may sound like I'm being somewhat flippant, but it's for the, it's yes. for the ease of listening. Yes. So from the age of about three, uh, um, I was locked up. And, and tortured and used as a slave and abused um, in the most brutal, violent ways um, until I escaped in my early 20s. And that meant not going to school, not being socialized, not interacting with people, but literally the most hellish life in every way. And um, there were times when it was like, I lived, I literally lived only because my heart beat. I felt like just a piece of meat, literally. And, um, and as you can imagine, over the years, this gets, this gets more and more overwhelming, more and more overbearing, and more and more you exist, you don't live. And I'll never forget, and this was the, this was the catalyst for the life that I live now. And I'll never forget that, one morning after a long, long, long night of torture and hell and abuse, um, I, w I was around about 15 years old. I was living in Dublin, Ireland. It was in November. Um, it was windy and rainy and breezy and cold <laughs> and grey. And I walked into the bathroom. And I remember walking over to the, to the hand basin and looking in the mirror. And in the moment I looked in the mirror, it was almost like it was the first time I actually um, really remember seeing me. Now I'm sure I've looked at, had looked in the mirror many, many times, but not, did nothing registered. But on this occasion, I looked in the mirror and I could see me. And it was like, well, it was weird. I, and I really saw me. And I looked in closer, I leaned in closer. 
And next thing I realized that I wasn't actually looking at my face because my face was bruised and there was blood on my lips and a torn threadbare light blue nighty that was ancient. I wasn't looking at all that. I was looking beyond my physical form. And I remember like looking in through my eyes and I saw something, I started to see something and I was leaning in and looking harder and deeper. And next thing I seem to, it's almost like I felt like I was reaching my arm in through my eyes and it grabbed something in my solar plexus, like connected. You. And that something, I called it my something for many years. I wasn't educated. I didn't have a language. I didn't know what, what, what was what. I could barely read or write. Um, and I called it my something for years. Now, as I was holding this, I was like transported out of my body, outside. I found myself outside with the thin blue nighty in my bare, foot, bare feet. It was windy, it was cold, it was gray, it was rainy, but I wasn't cold or uncomfortable. I remember feeling just free, a sense of freedom. It was a, it's a whole body sense of freedom, of merging. And I remember feeling literally like one with the trees, one with the wind, one with the rain that was on the windows, one with the grass that was being cut in the distance that I could smell. I was just one with everything, one with the birds that were flying. There was just a complete merging of oneness. And it was such a beautiful, weird, weird, weird but beautiful experience. Next thing I, I felt was this overwhelming feeling around my body and it literally was like a thousand beautiful warm blankets being wrapped around me and I couldn't understand what this feeling was it was so intense it was so powerful and I was trying to figure out what this feeling was it was extraordinary it rippled through my whole body and then it dawned on me that this was love this was love not a normal life love we feel, but a divine love, an all-encompassing divine love. And as I realized what it was, I looked, I've, I, look, I could see myself standing in front of the mirror. I looked up and I saw myself standing in front of the mirror. And in that moment, I healed for everything I had been going through, everything I was going through, and everything I was yet to go through. I healed in that moment. In that moment, I saw perfection. I saw beauty. I saw love. And isn't that the feeling that everyone is looking for? The feeling of love and the feeling of freedom. So we are caught in a society where we look for it in the wrong place. Yes. So I'm thinking about our audience and our entrepreneurs who are seeking, you know, and I love how you, you call it the iconic life, not just a life, not just surviving life, an iconic life. And we're stuck in these, I have to do this. And if this is supposed to be done like this, and we're, we're stuck in these constructs that we, that we feed. All, all the time with the stories that we tell ourselves and everything, but everyone fundamentally is seeking that freedom, freedom to be ourselves. That freedom is within, is about going inwards mm. and connecting in with the oneness. What I always say, what I learned in that from that experience and what I have used to create an iconic life, a life of the most extraordinary adventure and vast experiences I, is that oneness with the universe, that we are one with the universe and we have an ability to connect with the divine knowing. Mm. And we can access that. Every single one of us can access it. Mm -hmm. so 
before we get to how do we access it, because that's everyone's question all the time, how do we access it? I want you, if you could share with us. So I personally did my research and I know about, about your background, but also like from there, you left from nothing to attracting the job that you wanted, like the six figure figure. Can you take, to, take us to that part as well in your life? In that experience, like what I was telling you, but when I projected this healing, mm -hmm. I don't know how long that was. It could have been minutes. I don't know how long. I have no idea how long that experience was. But I knew one thing. Well, actually, I knew two things. When I came back into my body, came back into the present moment in my body, I knew two things. One, that... You can break my body. You can break my mortal physical body, but you can never touch my soul. I knew that. That was awesome. I also knew, and this doesn't make sense, it's gonna sound crazy, but between the time of me coming back into my body in that moment and, know, and having that knowledge, holding my something that you can hurt my mortal body you can do what you wish to my mortal body and that means anybody but no one can touch my soul and that is so for every single one of us that is empowering but when i the when the between the time of walking away from the mirror and opening the bathroom door there was something that i knew because if what to go back briefly to the outer body where, where I was standing outside, I saw so many different opportunities, so many ways in which my life would unfold. And every one of them were of abundance and fun and adventure of love and prosperity. Now, I didn't know any of that. Remember when these days, there was no internet, there was no YouTube, yeah. there was no internet. We had two TV stations in Ireland and at midnight it went to the snow. You know, the snow thing going on. You yes. won't know that. But like, that was it. So I had no access to any information. Ex so where did this come from? And then between the time of leaving the mirror to going to the bathroom door, I knew that I would live in abundance, in wealth, in luxury, in prosperity. I didn't use that word prosperity. It was more of a feeling. So I, didn't, I wouldn't have been able to even spell the word prosperity in those days. But I knew that I would escape mm -hmm. i knew that with every fiber of my body it was part of my dna that's what that experience gave me was that i knew i would escape i knew that i would get i would live a life of wealth and comfort and luxury i knew that i would get a job does it make sense i would get a job when i escaped in uh, oil and gas shipping merchant banking or stockbroking. I had no idea what any of them were. None. I had no clue what any of them were, but I knew that. So it was another six years before I escaped, but I never lost touch with that knowing. Mm. I trusted it. It was, it was part of my DNA. I knew it, I trusted it, I never stopped believing it. Mm -hmm. So in the interim, I worked towards it. You know, I was able to get books on economics and I was uneducated, all right? And I managed to get books on economics. I learned everything I could about economics. When kids were reading Enid Blyton, I was reading Adam Smith, the father of modern day economics. So I was reading everything I could about economics, about business, about money, about finance. You know, trying to prepare myself for, for this vision that I had. Mm -hmm. Not in a panicked way, but just preparing because I knew that was going to happen. Six years later, after that first vision, I did escape in the middle of the night. I left with nothing. Well, that's not strictly true. I had a plastic bag of old clothes, really old, yucky clothes. And I had one painting that I had done with my cat and I had a copy of Wuthering Heights. That was it. 
that was all I left with. Um, no money, nothing else. Middle of the night. Two days later, I was standing in London. It was a Friday night, about eight o'clock at night. This was now November. It was dark, it was cold. And I was standing alone in November, having manifested money, literally from nowhere, got a flight, gone on a flight. I'd never been to an airport, never been in an airplane. Landed in London, knowing no one, knowing nothing, Friday night. Within one week, I had two job offers. Both highly paid. One of them just on six figures. One was shipping and the other one was a, a, a trading account on an oil and gas trading floor. And I took the trading account on an oil and gas trading floor. I took that job. I walked into that office, told there's your computer, here's your login details, because they were, there were computers in those days. They are not what they are now. <laughs> they were like green screens. <laughs> but I like no CV, no degree, no experience. And this was now my reality. Hmm. How was that possible? How is that possible? It is not predictable. No. It's not logical. But yet there it was. That was my reality. And I worked there for 10 months. And when you say, you know, it was not predictable, it was not logical, do you think that the majority of humans, people, live in a world that is predictable and logical? Yes. Yeah. And we do that because it's safe. Mm -hmm. Because as Einstein, we were talking about this before we started, Einstein's quote, which is one of my favorite of his quotes, is that we live in a society where we have promoted the ego to that of master and forgotten the sacred gift of intuition. I will take, I, I'm going to just, I'm going to add on to that. We've forgotten the sacred gift of intuition. We've forgotten this, our sacredness, our divinity. Because the one thing I learned from that experience is that we are one with the universe. And one of the things I, sh I talk about is that it is honestly my opinion that we are the physical manifestation, the individualized physical manifestation of the universe. We are one part of the whole mind, every single one of us. Now, you, some people, especially the more sort of maybe logically thinking people who might be saying, that's not possible. Well, or just don't understand it. Yes, but there is a, now more and more. There's a great book, actually, The Tale of Physics. I actually love that book because it takes all of the physics, all of the, all of the, like, the Newtonian physics and quantum physics theories that we are discovering at, at hyper speed nowadays, mm -hmm. at exponential speed nowadays. And it's at, you, it takes it back to the ancient text. What the ancients knew is what the truth is. We've simply forgotten it. We have we forgotten. Can. Also, I think us individually, we know, we know because that is what, that was who we were when we were little, before, yeah. the, e before the ego construct. So we knew, and we knew what it was like to like to have an iconic life. We knew what it was like living in a world of potentiality where when you're a kid, like I want an elephant for my birthday, you know, like it, everything is possible. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. It's like, it's like the potentiality of going from lying on your back as a baby to walking. You know, we know, we believe it. We know, we don't need to be taught it. We do it naturally because why? Because we know it's possible. We know anything and everything is possible. We are connected to our divinity at its strongest when we are young. Mm -hmm. And depending on the experiences that we have as a child growing up to, you know, is determines how fast we lose that connectivity, lose that attachment, lose the, the awareness, the knowing, and we distance ourselves more and more and more from the truth of who we really are. And also the 
purpose behind us being here. Physics is now proving this. Like there's a thing, I'm not particularly fond of the, the, the term. It sounds very, well, compared to the magic of it, but it's Hebron learning is a thing. Mm. Physics is proving it. And what it is, is how we can learn the most extraordinary things just by imagination. Which brings us to today, you living your iconic life. You, like I said in the beginning, like you lived 72 lives in like one. And every time we share and every time that I see you, like it, I judge, I'm just like flabbergasted because like, how does this happen? How does this woman go from like, you know, next step next level next level and today that is what you do is you also you live your own iconic life and you help more people live their own iconic life yes so here's my question how how do we get to a place of living our iconic life a life where everything is possible the one thing that stops us from believing that it's possible is the conditioning we are living within the conditioning that we have has been put on us and also the conditioning that we have allowed to to develop within us mm -hmm. and the programming the programming that you've got to fit in the programming is that you've got to get a job and you've got to get married you've got to have children you've got to do the things all of the things and 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 you you've got to go by whatever your certificate tells you you can do you get a degree that's what you're that's what you're good at and that's all that's so you're but every which way you look we are boxed in our society it is not conducive to naturally connecting to the truth of who we are so if somebody is really cannot understand the how, the, the, the number one ingredient is to start reconnecting with how you are feeling. So not because of you're getting a 10k a month or you've got a good job or your boss says you're amazing or your husband or wife says or partner says that you are the love of the life or whatever it is it did not because of all those things take all of that away how are you feeling well it's really funny it's big it's a question that i've started asking myself a lot can you be happy can you be joyful? Can you be in bliss no matter what? That's the first step on this journey is learning, navigating, becoming aware of that. In Einstein's quote, we live in a society where we promoted the ego to that of master. We have suffocated our true self. And we have completely distanced ourselves from connecting with our own divinity. And the journey, the work, the journey is to navigate back to that. There's a lot of talk at the moment that has been for many years about doing the work, doing the mindset work and all that. Here's the thing. I, 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 and I used to be like that. I used to be very, and very much like that. In fact, we talked about it. My body of work is, is the trilogy of transformation that's how i take people through the journey and that used to be very much around mindset but here's the challenge with mindset by its very definition it is finite how can we just stick with mindset when we are infinite mm -hmm. mindset will take you to the upper limits of your limiting beliefs and that's as far as it will take you well, it's good it will get you to a point but it's not until you strip out of that and start getting into the soul set connecting with the essence of who you are no matter what not being not defining yourself based on the things the people the the experiences the your perceptions and all of those things can you be joyful your body tingle in exquisite bliss 
for no reason. I know this is possible because in the gap of the six years between that experience and me, and me escaping, I went through a lot of torture, a lot. But yet, inside, outside my life was hell, but inside I was in bliss. I, was, I had the most exquisite joy. I would, be, I would be in divine heaven, sneaking a moment just to listen to the rain on the window panes. To this day, when I hear seagulls, my whole body tingles. Because for me, listening to seagulls then gave me such pleasure, such joy, that it signified freedom. And in that moment of experiencing that, I was free. Because our soul is so much more than this mortal body. And here's the thing, and this is the part that so many people, I, I feel this is the one of the sources of so much suffering, is that our purpose here in this mortal body is to be the expression of our soul. Yes. So if you take that as your guide, as your foundation, you take that as the platform that becomes the, the launch pad for everything that's possible in life. That becomes the, the launch pad for unleashing all of your potentiality. Yes, because there's so much more. More than we can think with our current thinking. More than we can imagine with our current thinking. Because in the truth, in the soul, Everything is possible and everything exists in the quantum field. Everything right now, all possibilities, all potentialities, all of it exists right now. And what we understand in the, in the society that we live in is that everything is linear. It takes so long to get this. It takes so long to do this. To this takes this, takes that. All of this time and what is logical, what is linear. Whereas the truth is when you connect in with the soul, there is none of that. Mm -hmm. This is one of my businesses, the tribe of traders. We are, we have one, we have a trading company and we have traders from around the world who trade from the heart. They trade what we call trade from heart. They trade intuitively, not logic. There's no logic. And here's the thing if you, and, and I can talk about it because I've never lost this thing about trading. You know, when I had that download from the time I walked from the bathroom, out the uh, bathroom mirror at the door, right? Now, all these years later, one of my businesses trading and um, they trade my strategies or tiny strategies my husband business partner lover best friend all of the <laughs> everything into one yes yes um you know strategies he's come up with strategies i've come up with they trade it right but um here's the thing and is that what i have learned and what i've come to um uh um learn after having started tribal traders and talking to traders about trading from the heart, trading from intuition, not logic, not AVC, not predictable, not none of that, is that when I've researched all of the super traders throughout time, they've all been deeply spiritual people. Mm. Right down to Ray Dalio, who is today, he's, he's in his 70s, he's written a couple of amazing books. Yes. Ray Dalio is known as the most successful the most wealthy the most incredible hedge fund manager that has ever existed and he is a deeply spiritual person yes. all the super traders of all time have been deeply spiritual people why is that why is that because they're connected with their essence there's a knowing. Yeah. There's a knowing. There's a divine knowing. And when you're guided by that, and any traders or people in the financial services industry who might be listening, you will know that um, you know that there's a, there's some things that happen. You just have a gut feel about. It. You have an intuitive feel, but you don't follow it. Everyone would have experienced that, but you don't follow it. That's your divine knowing. That's your inner knowing. It's always trying to talk to you. It's always there. This is the important thing. That divinity in you is always there. It's not gone. It's just you're not listening to it. 
Yes, we're not listening to it. And it's there. It's trying to tell us all of the time. And you will, if you take a moment and look back on your career, look back on your love life, look back on anything around your life, you will, you will, you will acknowledge, you will see all of the times there was an inner knowing, but we didn't listen to it. So we don't listen to it. How do we listen to it more or start listening to it? It was a matter, but well, the um, a lot of people may not like this answer, but it is the it is the most profound way in which I have found that allows us to open the portal to receiving the information. It's just mindfulness, mm. breath, breathing, mindfulness, meditating, and here's the thing, and this is what I often say to people. One thing we know, we know we have this life. We know we are alive right now, right? I'm pretty confident about what goes on after. I'm, you know, given my research and my um, what I have experienced in my profound meditations and channeling, I have, I know there's more. Mm -hmm. But even if we forget that and just think we've got this life, that's what we know. Yep. We can either be master of our destiny or victim of our history. It is a choice we have every second of every day. We can either be master of our destiny or victim to our history. We have that choice every single moment of every single day. No matter what. We can be a victim to whatever has happened, but where does that get us tomorrow? Because tomorrow we'll still be a victim. Next week, next month, next year, we'll still be a victim. And we'll have more of what we don't want. More frustration, more overwhelm, more stress, more hamster wheel, mm -hmm. more balls in the air than we know how to manage. That's not living an iconic life. That's mm -hmm. not bliss, that's not joy, that's not abundance, that's not prosperity. No matter how much money you have, that is not that. This is not about how much money you have. It's about who you are, who, what you, who you are in your life. That's what creates the bliss, the joy, the abundance, the prosperity, not how much money you've got in your bank. There's so many insights here, so many aha moments that I, I hope people are picking up on because at the end of the day or at the end of the life, there's us with us asking ourselves, did I give it everything I got? Mm. That's it. The money's not there. The clients are not there. The houses, cars, whatever, nothing is there. It's us with us. So Judy, before I ask you the last question, where can people find you online and discover everything? Because you share so many things on so many aspects and there's so many ways that we could have gone in our, in our talk together, but we just open the door together. So where can people find you online, what you do, how you help and everything? Well, I've, um, I've got, thank you for that. Sarah, first of all, thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Um, I'm on Facebook mostly at the moment. Um, and I have a group called Attuned to Wealth. Mm -hmm. um, and my, my brand, my company is called Attuned to Prosperity as a reminder for us to choose that because of, back to Einstein, he says we live in a society where we have promoted ego to master. We have forgotten the sacred gift of intuition, the sacred gift of attuning to that which we desire. As, an, as a natural way of life. So Attuned to Prosperity is, is my brand and everything I do around is around that because I truly believe it. Again, one of my mottos is any area of life you're not empowered, you will be overpowered. If you're not financially empowered, you cannot be empowered in life. Mm. So for me, it's very important to be empowered financially in life so that we can live to the fullest extent of our potential because that's the life, that's the world we live in, isn't it? So I've got a Facebook group called Attune to Wealth. It's free to come and join. And I do masterclasses and programs and all sorts of stuff. Okay, so I'll make sure that we put all the links um, in the video, in our description. For you, what does it mean, a life well lived? Another one of my mottos is 
a fun-filled life is a fulfilled life. Mm. So whatever I'm doing, I have fun. And if I'm not having fun, I don't do it. Drop the mic. I think if people, you know, we were talking earlier about the feeling, how am I feeling? Fun is a feeling. And yes. I don't know about you, but I find that the more fun that I have, the more I thrive in my life, mm -hmm. the more I thrive in my business. 100%. It all goes to Totally. Me. Yeah. That's what it's about. We are here to have fun. We're here to experience joy. Yes. Judy, thank you so much for accepting my invitation today. Thank you so much for the invite. It's been an amazing chat. I've loved it. Really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. I hope you like this episode. I know we've touched on topics that some people might not be attuned with. Some people might take, it might take them out of their comfort zone. My invitation here is play around with it. What if? What if I checked how, checked in with myself and see how I feel more often? Play with it. What if it was possible? What if I allowed myself? Because as we know it, there's one life. Got to get everything we've got. Build a business around what we want to live, how we want to live, how we want to thrive and live an iconic life. Because when we touch that and we start touching that, we see that so much more is possible. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up, share it, share it with somebody you know wants to, or maybe is open to the idea of living an iconic life. And together, let's really go into that world of possibilities where everything is possible. Thank you for being here week after week, and I'll see you next Tuesday.